breakfast puppies? This podcast contains adult language and content and is meant for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Glitter Boys. Hello, listeners. Welcome to the very first episode, or we should call it episode zero. I think that's the official game term these days. Yeah. Episode zero, session zero of our new recording project, The Glitter Boys. The Glitter Boys. (laughs) Now, for those of you who do not know us, I am NPC and my co-host here is... Hi, I'm Matthew. And we previously were joined together on a podcast called Have Movies, Will Game which was a lot of fun. Our first foray. Yeah, we spent a lot of time in that podcast talking about movies and then matching them to tabletop role-playing games in order to get some inspiration for your games from various movies. Oftentimes, we chose Palladium games, and it became such a running (laughs) gag that... uh, No, gag's not the right word. A running theme that eventually somebody from Palladium Rex contacted us, sent us a care package, and was thinking us for talking about Palladium all the time. And that really, really warmed my heart. You know, it felt good. I have to say that of of all the games that you could you could possibly use for, you know, our previous plan of of Have Movies Will Game, Palladium had something, it, it was mentioned almost every episode. And to the point that uh, our other co-host for that podcast, Dusty, at one point was like, <laughs> this is not a Palladium podcast. <laughs> well, we should start a Palladium podcast, don't you think? <laughs> Yeah, maybe we should. And that's what we're doing now. This is our love letter to Palladium Games. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't I can't recall. Like it, it was easily pre-junior high when when I didn't know about Palladium. Palladium was was one of the first uh games that I was I was ever introduced to. And it, it just struck me. And you know, I'm I'm over 40 now and I'm still playing Palladium. That's that's what, almost three decades of love of the system. <laughs> That's a significant portion of my life. Yeah. I, uh, Palladium has outlived marriages. Palladium has outlived states I, I work in. Palladium has outlived career paths. Several, several pets. I mean, Palladium is, it's just this, this huge, massive, beautiful thing. You know, aside from my family, aside from yeah. maybe one friend that I still talk to from my youth, I've known Palladium longer than I've known anyone else. <laughs> Indirectly, Kevin Ciambietta and or Simbita. I think it's Simbita. I think it was. I, I, I always thought it was. You know what? I'm, I'm sure someone from Palladium will correct us, but I always thought it was Ciambietta. Yeah, that's how I thought. But I think someone recently corrected me that it is Simbita. So I'm going to go with Simbita. that until someone okay. recorrects me. Okay. But Kevin, the Kevins, Sambita and Long, were so cemented in my childhood imagination. Oh, God, Kevin Long, man. That they're, it's just, it, it's like, I, I don't even know them. Like, I met Kevin Sambita once in passing mm. at a convention in 2001, but I never met Kevin Long. I still feel like they're my pals, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I remember the the first piece of art I that really struck me. A friend of mine had the Robotech role-playing game. The, the original uh, in Palladium. And there is this piece of art inside by Kevin Long. And it's an action pose of a, of a battleoid. Mm. And, and it's, it's kind of from like the, the intro of Robotech where it's, it's got the arm cocked back and one arm forward and it's an action stance. And one of the things is that Kevin did so much of that early art, but a lot of it was very uh, stolid. You know, it was just static poses but that and the bold lines and the black and white is so good. Yeah. The one that bought my soul, that, that made me a Palladium player, was the Long Bowman. It was, it was spot art. It was just this simple little black mm-hmm. and white spot art at the top of a character class in the Palladium Fantasy First Edition book. Such a simple image. For some reason, that image alone is burned on my soul. You when know, I die, I'm, I want it carved <laughs> into my headstone. <laughs> I'm I'm not familiar with that one. Is that from Palladium, the the fantasy game? That's from the fantasy, specifically the first edition book. Uh huh. Yeah my my first contact with Palladium was the role playing game. Uh, uh, excuse me the uh, the the Robotech game, and we did that through junior high school. But then. 
oh, then we found riffs at the, I want to say the beginning of high school, uh, 90, 92. Is that right? 90. Yeah. Somewhere around there. When did riffs come out? Oh God. I want to say 90, 92 around that era. Yeah. I I grew up in the backwoods, so I was a little bit behind the curve, but um, yeah, I recall when that came out and it was the, uh, the, the picture of the, what is it? Splug Earth Slaver? Yeah. The, with, the with, uh, with, with, with the, you with, know, with the, the, the sexy warriors. ladies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I grew up, uh, with, with, with art books all in my, uh, all in my house. My dad was like a big fan of Julie Bell and Boris Vallejo. Mm-hmm. And to see art of that quality in a role-playing game, you know, done with oils and just, just stunning. I, I have to say one of the things that has always drawn me to Palladium is the art. The, the art style of Palladium, it's, it hasn't changed a ton and it's, it's gorgeous, oh, especially for yeah. a young, ma- young man. The art in Palladium is for me and for many others that I've communicated with online, one of the biggest selling points yeah. because you look back at a lot of stuff from the early era and compared, you had Dungeons and Dragons, which, yeah. had, it, you know, its own folk, its own style of art. You either had the the Dungeon Dirty Dave Trampier style art or the Jeff Easley, Larry Elmore kind of stuff yeah. that was uh, this high evocative fantasy. But then Palladium comes around and their art was just so uh, God, clean. So clean. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, there were, I, I can't even really get into it because I didn't take any specific art notes to talk about for this. <laughs> we will definitely go into talking okay. more about the artists. Uh, Kevin Long, Ramon Perez, uh, Tim mm-hmm. Bradstreet, fucking Brahm. So many fantastic yeah. <laughs> artists have gone through Palladium and just created fantastic works. Yeah. Bringing them to life. So you said Robotech was your was your introduction to Palladium. Oh, yeah. Maybe your first RPG? No, no. My first RPG was the old Ice uh, Merp Middle Earth role playing. Oh, that's a good answer. Yeah. My first game was Palladium, though. The first one I ever actually played that was mm-hmm. a tabletop game. I had played a lot of Dragon Warrior and the original Final Fantasy on my Nintendo. Dragon Warrior. Yeah. The Slimes. <laughs> I, I was obsessed with those games. And then a friend of mine was like, you need to play the real thing. And mm-hmm. he introduced me to tabletop role-playing game. It was middle school. It yeah. was, I was thinking, oh, I was thinking we were going to go play AD&D because that's what everyone was talking about. And that's what I knew my brother played. Yeah. But instead he's like, no, we're going to play something better. And he introduced me to Palladium Fantasy, a black covered book with red evocative minimalist art on the cover and i was boom eyes eyes wide i must go there i must (laughs) i must be in this place and i remember you said you migrated to rifts i didn't actually migrate to rifts until like middle to late high school because yeah in middle school the guy who introduced me to palladium fantasy he was like well we're gonna play fantasy for now uh maybe one day when you're older you get to play rifts i'm like dude you're the same age as me (laughs) <laughs> he's like, well, yeah, but it's my brother's and he's, he's like, it's advanced and he won't even let anyone, he won't, he rarely even lets me play. It's like your brother's, he's gatekeeping the gatekeeper. He was, gatekeeping. <laughs> he, was he was saying that Rifts was too complicated <laughs> advanced for a 12 year old to understand this guy himself being 14. I'm like, come oh, on, oh, a wise old man, <laughs> wise old man of 14, a towering skyscraper of a human <laughs> of intellect. <laughs> God, one of the things that drew me to Rifts was um, because I, right after Robotech, and this was when Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was everywhere, I I started playing a character there. And then it was, I was playing Robotech and I was playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Then I learned of a new project that brought everything together, Mm -hmm. like everything together. And that was Rifts. And Rifts contains something called the multiverse, which is this, this amazing concept that, that no, no other gaming system had ever tried. And indeed, few authors, uh, with the exception of like uh, Heinlein, has ever attempted. A bit of terminology correction. I apologize. It's actually officially called oh. the Megaverse. Ah, I know. I actually have that written down not to call it anything else. Trademark but, property of yeah. Kevin Sabita and Palladium Books. <laughs> yeah, th- th- you're right. I'm sorry. I'm a bad human being. But yeah, uh, like that and Michael Moorcock were the only people who ever, who ever worked on uh, a multiverse. And then the megaverse was something I could play in and I could take, and I did take my, my Robotech character 
and import them in. And my Robotech character and my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles character have actually fought to the death in an early game of Rifts. Who was your first Palladium character? Oh, he was a, a Veritech pilot named Brandon something or other. I, I don't recall. Yeah, he, he was a uh, just a, a straight Veritech fighter pilot. Nice. Mine was a Centaur Paladin, P-A-L-L-A-D-I-N, because that's how oh, yeah. Palladium yeah. spelled it. A Centaur Paladin named Erdrick, because I was obsessed with Dragon Warrior at the time. Oh, right, right. And no, I, he immediately died in the very first adventure by falling into a pit. <laughs> oh, no. yeah, because uh, those were the people that I played with. Yeah, th- those early games, they were, you know, you're, you're kids and you kind of play this power struggle thing at the same time. I'm, I'm really glad as as I've grown as a gamer that I've moved away from that kind of stuff. Ditto. Like you can still die, of course, but there was a... And eh, kids are cruel. <laughs> you do stupid stuff. Yeah, I do still occasionally hear that little piping distant voice of my my deep inner early days murderous asshole uh, <laughs> trying to gain my attention whenever I have a player ask me oh can I do this can I do this for some reason there's still that born into me bred through years of playing in the 80s this instinct to just go no and you die but I'm like wait no no I'm not that person anymore <laughs> it, it should be noted that that NPC is actually my GM in, <laughs> in the current game we're playing in Rifts. My character asks for things a lot <laughs> of the time. Can, can I, can I, can I? How, how many times <laughs> has Abel uh, awakened that inner child murderer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I do my best to accommodate, you know, yeah, yeah. keep everything in balance. It's a fun game. We'll talk about our <laughs> game at some point in the future, definitely. Yeah. It was actually... COVID that brought this together and it COVID because I had to cancel all of my in-person games or move some of them online. Finally, through the eventualities that this led to, I decided I'm going to run rifts. I haven't run rifts in 20 fucking years. I am going to run rifts. We've been talking about it for so long. For so long. And now that we're running rifts, of course, my my Palladium collection has uh, quintupled over the last <laughs> few months uh, as I've recollected a lot of the books that I lost in moves for over the years. And uh, I just can't get enough. And now I want to talk about it all the time. So yeah. that's why we're here. Yeah, it's it's a richer, fuller. If, if you're anything like me and just just have this this passion for lore, you will not find a, a richer setting, a, a, a setting with such depth as you will find in the, I mean, they, they must have a thousand books of palladium setting. Definitely palladium hundreds. setting rules. I, 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 there's got to be at least hundreds. If you we know? count the rifters, where are they there's at the rifters? There's 84, 80, 85. Oh, that's, that's all there is? Yeah. I thought there was more. Still, there is a ton of material to pour through. Yeah. We're going to be talking for a long time, folks. Yeah, we're talking, th- there's a lot uh, to get we're through. We're going to do our best to go into things. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and wrap up this episode of introductions. And uh, in our next episode, we'll talk about our plans for the show. All right. But, well, thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Any further origin story talks or topics, Matthew? Oh, of riffs or, 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 or my, uh, my experiences in it. I mean, I, th- let, let's see. I, I would say I, I played for two years. 20 minutes cafeteria <laughs> I mean, during lunch break. Uh, all my friends live too far apart to get together. So we actually played when we were supposed to be eating and often instead of eating. Yeah. We would just sit and make characters. Yeah. The rules were a little bit beyond what young Matthew could understand. So a lot of house rules were made. Oh, house rules. And we will probably have an episode of that as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, I will just say that anybody who says that they are playing Palladium and not using house rules is lying. Challenge me. Bring it. Prove me wrong. But I'd love to hear from anybody who is listening to this who can claim to run Palladium without their own rules. Yeah, except for maybe someone who works at Palladium. You don't count. I, you know, I've heard stories that even they run it differently oh, yeah. than it's printed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get to that in another topic. Uh, for now, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time. All right. See you later, folks. Bye. You've been listening to The Glitter Boys, a Palladium Books fan podcast. 
Glitter Boys, Rifts, The Megaverse, and all other such topics are the property of Kevin Sambita and Palladium Books. Please buy all their stuff and help keep them in print and making more games. You can order directly at palladiumbooks.com, and their entire catalog is available digitally at DriveThruRPG as well. Our opening music is 8-Bit Bass and Lead by Furby Guy from freesound.org. This closing music is Caravana by Philip Gross, available at freemusicarchive.org. All sound effects used are self-made or acquired via Creative Commons Zero License. If you like what you have heard, find us on Twitter and Facebook as The Glitter Boys. That's B-O-I-S. And check us out online at breakfastpuppies.com slash glitterboys. And also join us on the Breakfast Puppies Network Discord at breakfastpuppies.com slash discord. And if you want to help us out, please spread the word and help us build a community. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you next time. 